Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. Today we have this challenge on the board. It's an unusual question and uh, I like exploring unusual questions, okay? Uh, the question was produced some time ago, okay? I made a video on this challenge, but I just have to take in that to uh, bring a clearer version of it. The question is 16 to the power of x plus 8 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x plus 2 to the power of x plus 1 equal to 0. What is the value? of x that will satisfy this challenge here okay so let's take our solution yeah we're looking for the value of x but i asked to look for the value of x here so what is the value of x we take our solution from here so solution now you discover that here we are having two to the power of x and the beauty of this question or in this challenge is that four can be expressed in base two, eight can be expressed in base two, and 16 can be expressed in base two. So let's go ahead and express all this quantity in base two. So this is going to give us our two to the power of four, all raised to the power of x, then plus two to the power of three, all raised to the power of x, plus two to the power of two, all raised to the power of x, plus add two to the power of x, plus one equal to zero. Now, Look at this number we have here. We are having 2 to the power of x here, right? We want to achieve same in the brackets we have here. So we want to force this x inside. In other words, we want to push the x inside and push this figure here outside. We are going to apply a simple law in indices which says that when you have your e to the power of, let's take p dot q, then this could be written as a to the power of p or in bracket raised to q or our a to the power of q or in bracket raised to p okay so we're going to interchange this now so this will be written as 2 to the power of x bracket bracket our 4 then plus 2 to the power of x bracket bracket 3 then plus 2 to the power of x bracket bracket 2 plus 2 to the power of x plus 1 equal to 0 so you discover we are having 2 to the power of x all true here now. Okay, so we're going to do a simple substitution here. Okay, so let's bring in another alphabet to represent this 2 to the power of x to give us a different equation. So let's bring a closer alphabet to our x. So let's take y. So you're going to say let our um, 2 to the power of x be equal to our y. So wherever we see 2 to the power of x, we want to put in y in there. So this now implies that our equation will now become our y to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 2 plus our y then plus our 1 equal to 0. So this is a fourth degree polynomial equation where we have to solve for four roots or four values of y that will satisfy this equation. Now, we cannot use the trial by error method in solving for this challenge here. So the only way we can use or we can apply in solving this is to think of something else. Now, from this place here, you discover that if you decide to divide through by two, you're going to have an algebraic identity. And from that algebraic identity, you would be able to solve for the value of our y here from there substituting into this to give us a correct value for x that will actually satisfy this equation. And so what do we do, we think of our geometric series or geometric progression. What does it say? It says that your e plus your e arrow plus e arrow to the power of 2, the plus a arrow to the power of 3 plus our da dash, then our plus our a arrow to the power of n minus 1. You remember this? This is from your geometric series, right? Good. So if we have this expression to be this, this will now be equal to what? And so we can now take this to be equal to our a arrow to the power of n minus 1 all over arrow minus one wow remember this expression good so if you remember this expression now we can liken this expression to what we have in here now look at this and look at what we have here okay decrease it down to we have one here now so let's look at our question if we now relate this to this what will be the format format of this expression in this form 
what will be the form of this expression in this form? It's going to give us something of this. So it means that our y to the power of 4 plus y to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 2 plus r y plus 1, this is equal to, yeah, look at it carefully. What is our a and what is our arrow? If you check carefully, a is equal to 1 from this expression and arrow is equal to r y. Okay? Okay, so A is equal to 1 and arrow is equal to Y. So if it is so, then we can now bring in this format for this. So this is going to give us our Y to the power of 5 minus 1 all over Y minus 1. Why are we saying this is to the power of, look at this, this is to the power of 4 and we are having this to the power of 5. Look at our expression we have here. Okay, N minus 1. Okay, so hence this y will be to the power of 4, and if this to the power of 4, this will be to the power of 5. That is a simple uh, logic, right? Okay, so from here, we are having the whole of this equation to be equal to 0. So this is equal to 0. So we can now rewrite this expression to give us something unique here. So taking this, it now implies that our y to the power of 5 minus 1 all over y minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, if you take a look at this challenge here, y cannot be equal to 1. Okay? Y cannot be equal to 1. Why? Because we cannot divide by 0. If y is equal to 1, then the denominator is going to give us 0. And that would be y to the power of 5 minus 1 all over 0, which is undefined. And so, what we do here, we multiply it through by y minus 1. So if we do that, we're going to have y to the power of 5 minus 1 is equal to 0. Move this to this side of the equation, so we have y to the power of 5 is equal to positive 1. Never made the mistake of taking the fifth power of both sides of the equation. How? Because that will give us what? 1. And we'll say that y cannot be equal to 1. So what we do here, we think of another method of solving for our y. And what is that method? We're going to evoke the Euler equation. And what does Euler equation says? It says that your, um, let's put it here, your e all to the power of your uh, pi iota plus 1 is equal to 0. So if we move on to this side, we're going to have e to the power of pi iota is equal to minus 1. But here we have plus 1. So what do we do? We're going to raise both sides of this equation to 2k, where k is a constant ranging from 0, 1, 2, 3, down, right? Good. So from here, this is going to give us e to the power of our pi, yeah, all raised to the power of 2k, there, equal to minus 1, all raised to the power of 2k. Now, if we apply this rule, yeah, we can shift this in. Or we can raise this to uh, minus 1 to the power of 2, all raised to k. And that will give us what? Positive 1. And 1 to the power of k will give us what? 1, which is positive 1. So in other words, we're going to have our e to the power of our 2k pi iota, okay, equal to our 1. We come back to our original equation here. So we can substitute the whole of this expression we have here in place of 1. So we now have our y to the power of 5 is equal to our e to the power of 2k pi iota. Are we getting something here? Yeah, let's separate this out here, please. Okay. Now, with what we have here now, we want to take this sixth power or the sixth rule. So this is going to give us our fifth rather, fifth, so we'll have five, all raised to the power of one, all over five, this is equal to R E raised to two K pi iota, okay? Uh, let, let's erase, so this R I, all raised to one, all over five. This, this leaves the system, so we now have Y is equal to our E raised to the power of two K pi iota, all over five. Easy. All right. So with this now, we have our k to be what? Because to look for five roots, yeah. So meaning we have here our k is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and we stop at 4. Because this is going to give us our y1, y2, y2, uh, 3, y4, y5, right? Now, if we substitute our y0 into this system, this is going to give us 1. 
And remember we said y cannot be 1. So we're going to ignore the first value here, which is k equal to 0. We start from this other side. But again, now we have our y to be this. What is now the value of our x? So we remember where we said let 2 to the power of x be equal to y. So let's do the substitution here and get the value of our y to x to this challenge. So when we recall, we say we have our 2 to the power of x is equal to what? y. So if we recall this, we're going to substitute that into this system. So we have our 2 to the power of x is equal to the first value or the general equation is this, right? So let's take this is equal to our e to the power of 2k pi i all over 5. Easy. Now we're looking for x, right? So we have to ln both sides of the equation. So if we take the ln of 2 to the power of x, this is equal to the ln of this times our 2 pi k. k is here, please, all over our 5. Now remember that our ln times e will give us 1. So this is going to give us, we'll be left with 2 k pi i all over 5. Easy. Here we have power here. So we apply the law of logarithm, which says that if you have your ln of a to the power of your b, this is equal to b times the ln of a. So if we apply that, we're going to move this x back to this side here. So if we do that, we're going to have our x times the ln of 2 is equal to 2k pi iota all over r5. We are looking for x, right? So we divide by our ln of 2. So divide by ln of 2, we equally divide this side by the ln of 2. This, this will leave. So we now have our x will now be equal to, now if we use this to divide this, we're going to come up with our 2k pi iota all over 5 times the ln of r2. Wow. So this is the value of our x that we give us uh, or that we satisfy this equation. But mind you, we have about five roots to this challenge here and we said our k cannot be zero based on this condition. So we're going to start from this one here. So what is now the value of our x1, x2, x3, x4, x5? Knowing that x1 is already out of the system, so starting with this, so we're going to have our x1, our x1, will now be equal to what? So we are going to substitute for k. k is going to be what? 1. So when k is 1, what will be our x1? Our x1 is going to give us 2 pi iota all over a 5 ln of 2. This is our first value for our x. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for our x2. What is our x2? Our x2 is going to give us, so we're going to have our k to be 2. So if we put that into this original equation, this is going to give us our 4, uh, yeah, 4 uh, pi iota, then all over uh, our 5 ln of 2. Wow. So our x3, so we're going to have x3, we're now going to take this, which is going to give us our 6 pi iota all over 5 ln of 2. And our x4, which is the last one, this is going to give us times 4 to give us 8 pi iota all over 5 ln of uh, 2. So these are the values of x that we satisfy this equation. In other words, the four roots we solve for, for the value of x, they are all imaginary roots. All right, so this brings us to the end of this math class. If you learned something from this video tutorial, do not forget to give the video a thumbs up. Okay, thank you for being there. This is All I Must TV. If you've not subscribed, do it to subscribe. See you in our next class. Bye. Till then.